Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and Aurora HDR. I've got an old photo that I did an HDR of many years ago, and I've uh, basically gone back and decided I want to re-edit this photo. I've got better tools now, and I've got a better understanding of how to do things. Uh, and I can do stuff now that I couldn't do back then. This was probably 10 years ago, so not only are the tools better, but I I've got a better understanding of how to use them. And in fact, I'm using different tools because Neo wasn't around and Aurora HDR wasn't around. So I'm gonna get into it. Here are five photos. And what I wanna do is send them over to Aurora HDR. So I'm gonna click on File and Open In and go to Aurora HDR. So you can see it pulls up this little menu here. I'm gonna do Auto Alignment. I'm gonna go ahead and click Ghost Reduction uh, and High and Fix CA, things like that. I'm basically just taking these brackets, merging them together in Aurora HDR, simply because it's kind of fun. And this was an HDR, and you may have seen that a moment ago, some of the other versions of this photo that I've done over the years. And yes, I go back and re-edit previously edited photos, simply because it's fun, and it's good to see how far you've come from when you originally edited it. I'm now in Aurora, it's merged the photo, and I've got you know a pretty decent looking photo. I'm not gonna do a whole lot here. Uh, maybe a little bit of Smart Tone, simply because it's an amazing tool. I wish they would put that in Luminar Neo, but I am gonna go into HDR Enhance. I want some of that HDR clarity and some of that smart structure because it's fantastic and I love it. So I think I'm pretty good here. I wanna do the majority of my editing back over in Neo, but I wanted to use these two tools in combination. Unfortunately, it's not a true plug-in workflow from Neo over to Aurora and back. So what I've got to do is export this photo. So click on export, export to image. It comes up with that. And I'm going to call this version two just so that I have that there. Pro photo, TIFF, all those kind of things. I want to save it as a TIFF, not as a JPEG. Better quality file. I'm going to go ahead and hit save, wrap up my work here in Aurora HDR, which I can now close. I've got it on my desktop. I'm going to go ahead and drag it into that same folder. And as you can see, it shows up automatically here. So I'm going to click on that. And that is my version two TIFF file. I'm going to go ahead and click on edit and get over here and have some fun. So blended five exposures as an HDR in Aurora, I've dropped it back in Neo in my catalog. It is here and I'm ready to go. The first thing I need to do is fix the verticals, something I didn't do all those years ago. That's where transform comes in really handy. And I go to about a negative 10 here. That just straightens up those verticals really well. So if you look at the before and after, there it is before, and there it is now. Now, one of the things I didn't have the capability to do, it wasn't automatic back then, and I didn't have the skill either, and that was replacing sky, which I am gonna do in this case because why not? That sky's kind of boring. It was just gray and you know blah, whatever. So I'm going to come in and do something a little bit more interesting. I'm going to use this dramatic sky five that's built in, but I do need to fix a few things. So I'm going to go into sky orientation and horizon position is going to like a negative nine. I want to get those clouds in place and the vertical position is going to go to about a positive seven. So I've got that nice grouping of clouds kind of there in the center. If you look at the before and the after, I think it's looking pretty good. I am going to use a little bit of relight. So it defaults to 20 and I go to about 32 or 33. Uh, and for sky adjustments, I am going to take the warmth negative so that it is a little bit cooler. So let's say maybe a negative 35. So let me just show you overall sky replacement. There is before and there's current state. So I'm good with that. But of course, those power lines are in the way. Well, hey, you can erase those pretty easily now as well. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to click on remove power lines and let Luminar do its magic. Okay, there we go. That looks pretty good, to be honest. I did nothing other than click a single button, and it went from that to that. Now, you can see over here, there's a little bit that got taken out. So you can just come in and kind of paint along here because it pulled out a little bit of the edge of the sign and that sort of thing. And then you can just click the button for Restore, and it will add that back. So now the before and after is really pretty much just the power lines. Again, it did it all automatically. I think it did a great job. So I'm happy with that. Now I want to get into some real editing. So I'm going to start in develop and I'm going to do about a 20 on smart contrast. Pull the highlights down a negative 27, 28. Shadows are coming up about a 16 or 17. Temperature and tint is going to get adjusted. I am going to cool it off a little bit. So like a negative 12 or 13, slight bit of tint and a slight bit of vibrance. So my before and after is that and that for develop. That's looking good. I 
now go into Super Contrast, one of my favorite tools, something I talk about quite a bit. It just gives you so much control over the light, and that's really what I'm still working on here. So I made some adjustments to the main sliders, and then, as I always do, I come in and play with the balance, and this is really just a season to taste kind of thing where I move things around until I decide that I like them. There's no science to this. It's completely art, uh, meaning it's subjective, and there's no right way to do any of it. You just play around, move the sliders until you find something that you like. I ended up on that, which I do like. So let me show you the before. There it is, and there's the after. Slight difference in contrast, but also contrast pops colors. So some of the colors, like in that brick wall and that red neon sign above the, uh, the bar on the right, are getting to pop a little bit more. So I like that. I now come in with Structure AI, and I go here to about a 45, but I wanna brush this in. I don't want it across the entire photo, and that's one thing I used to do a lot of with HDRs was just detail and crunch everywhere. I'm now being a little bit more selective with it, and that's where a brush mask, I think, works really well. So just make sure you're on paint, adjust the size accordingly, and I'm gonna reduce the strength, and what I wanna do is just kinda of brush in some structure in some areas here in the center of the photo. I don't want to cover the whole photo, and I don't want to do 100% uh, opacity. So I don't want it all coming through. I just want a little bit more structure down the center, something about like that. So if you look at the before and after, it's not massive, but I think it is noticeable. Just a nice little impact on the photo. And now that I've done that, I'm going to come in and do something similar with develop. I'm actually going to brighten that center section just a little bit. I want to brighten the photo, maybe something like that, and go into the mask, and once again with the brush, and reduce opacity, and increase the size, and you know, something similar, maybe not quite the same. So I didn't copy and paste the mask, although if you knew you wanted to use it in the exact same area, obviously you could do that. But I'm just doing a little bit of brightening right around there. Again, not quite the same area as before, but if you look at the before and after, there it is before. And there it is now. And then you might come in and do a little bit further refinement if you want. I'm going to bring that up just a tiny bit. And I'm also going to add a little bit of sharpening here in that center section that I just masked. So maybe a 25. All I'm doing is just creating a little bit of a corridor of detail and pop in the center of the image. Because to me, it is the roadway, or in this case, walkway. But your eyes kind of goes down that and follows it. So you catch the bar on the right, and you follow it to this guy here that's walking down the street. So I'm just brightening it, adding a little bit of sharpness to hopefully bring your eye to it a little bit more. There it is uh, before, and there it is now. In fact, I think I'm gonna go just a little bit brighter. Just be careful, you, you know, you don't wanna go too bright because the mask will show up considerably and look really out of place. But something like maybe a 0.5, something about like that is a nice little pop. Okay, I'm done with that, and now having done that, I wanna do the opposite, which is basically reduce the exposure in uh, some areas like that left hand side and some of the buildings so i'm going to just drop the exposure a little bit go into masking once again on the brush and also drop the opacity increase the size of my brush and just do a little bit of an exposure drop here in that background and along this side i just want to again creating a little bit of a corridor of light through the center of the image and just kind of playing with it you know something about like that slightly darkening some of these areas that are not really central or core to the image. It's not a massive difference, it's just a little bit. There it is before, and there it is now. Just trying to adjust the light. So basically, it's dodge and burn, but with develop. Because you have the masking tools and you can use it again and again, it's basically now a dodge and burn kind of tool. The difference, of course, is that you have all these other controls to go with it, so it's really better than dodge and burn. But um, anyway, that is that, and so I think I've got everything I need there. Yeah, I think that looks good. So for me, a little color harmony and specifically color balance. You know, I added this to the top because I use it a lot, so I made it a favorite. But another good reason to have color harmony up here is you can see it better when it's higher. When it was down at the bottom down here in Professional, which is actually gone because I've got the two professional tools, Super Contrast and Color Harmony, moved to the top. But I can see it better now when I break this tool, uh, blow it out into these different sections. It's not buried at the bottom. I don't have to keep scrolling. It's at the top, so I kind of like that. Uh, for shadows, yellow and blue, I'm going to do a slight bump, like a five or six. For mid-tones, I'm going to do a slight bump in yellow-blue to about a two. And in the highlights, I'm going to do a negative 10 or 12 here and a positive six or seven over here. So creating a little bit bluer overall look to the photo. There it is before, 
and there it is after. I just kind of like the blue. Now that I've done that, I'm going to do something slightly opposite, which is go into golden hour and just give a little bit of bump to golden hour across the entire image. I don't want to go too much and overdo it and make a really saturated image, but I do want some of those warm tones to stand out. Golden hour is great at doing that across the entire photo. So there it is before and there it is now. And the last thing I'm doing to wrap this up is just a little vignette. So I'm going to do like a negative 40, you know, five, whatever it is, maybe about a 25 or 30 here. And I need a little inner light and I'm going to do like a 10 or 11. That really helps pop that extra corridor of light that I was talking about. And I didn't choose my subject here. It does default to the center of the photo, but I actually think it looks good. It kind of brightens part of this area over here that I also slightly brightened with the brush, but it brightens some of that, but it also brightens the walkway where the gentleman is coming down the street. So there it is before that, and there it is now. And that's my full edit, my friends. Let me show you the before and after. If you look at the before, it's really kind of washed out, very basic flat HDR, which is fine. I actually like my HDRs to start that way because I like to come in and edit and add the contrast and the color pop and all that as part of the editing process, not necessarily as part of the base HDR, but fairly flat. The sky was kind of, even with an HDR, it was kind of blown out and kind of boring and gray. Verticals were way off. All these things are easy to fix and do in Luminor Neo. New sky, fix the verticals, all kinds of adjustments to the light and the color created a lot different temperature feel, but I was trying to get a little bit of a combination or a difference between the warm and the cool. So I got a cooler sky. I got kind of a cooler area here, but I got a little bit of pop of warmth on that left side with that building. And of course, I've got a bigger pop of warmth on the right hand side with a main restaurant or bar that's over here on the right. So one more time before and after. That's my full edit, my friends. That was just how I'm using Aurora HDR in combination with Luminar Neo. They work great together, even though it's not a full plug-in workflow. You can export them from Neo, save it back to your desktop, drop it into the same folder as your original files, and it shows up next to them. So it takes a few seconds longer, but it's really not hard. So even though we lack the full plug-in capability, they still work really well together. And I think you can get some nice looking results. That's how I did it today. Thanks for watching, my friends. I appreciate it. You guys take care of yourselves. And if you wanna see more stuff on Aurora HDR, let me know down below. I still use it, I still love it, and I don't really know what the future is of the product because there hasn't been an update in quite a while, but still, it's an amazing product. It just works so well. So thanks for watching, my friends. I appreciate it. You guys take care of yourselves, and until next time, adios.